Hi, my name is Bart Paulson, and this is a sample presentation for students in my research classes. And uh, this is a pretty good presentation because it's very similar to the studies that you'd be doing. It's original empirical study, and it's a pretty short presentation. This is based on a project uh, that Nicole Ortega, a dance professor here at UVU, and I conducted together that looked at the participants, well, people who participated in high school modern and creative dance classes, how they felt it affected them. And so we called it Dance Made Me a Genius, Reflections on Participation in High School Dance. We had a few goals in this study. We mostly wanted to look at how people felt about their dance participation. So this is a retrospective self-report of perceived benefits. We cat categorized the benefits into four general areas, creativity and problem solving, an obvious one given that this is a creative endeavor. Academic performance is that uh, outcome is often important to school administrators and state legislators. Self-image uh, as an important psychological outcome. And finally, professionalism. Uh, it's nice to have a work-related outcome, something that should carry outside of uh, school. Now, I want to give a brief literature review, a study that's relevant to each of these four outcomes. Uh, in the published paper, uh, we did publish this. Uh, I go into much more length, but this gives you a taste of what's been done. A study by Harland et al. looked at uh, secondary students, like high school students in the UK, and what they found is that the students who participated in arts, uh, compared to those who participated in less, these students showed greater creativity, uh, which should be expected for people in arts, as well as thinking skills. But it depended on the kind of art that they engaged in. Music was, engaged, uh, was related to critical listening, which makes sense. Visual art. Uh, is related to expressive skills. Again, makes sense. And dance was associated with greater bodily awareness, which actually can be a really wonderful thing in a lot of uh, disciplines. For academic performance, an area that's of great interest, again, to administrators and legislators, a study in the U.S. by Catterall back in 99 looked at 8th to 10th grade students, so mostly junior high, and found that those who participated in more arts uh, by going to classes in and out of school, they also went to museums more often, they found that those students tended to do better on standardized test scores and nearly every other academic outcome they looked at. And these were fabulous outcomes. Um, now, an important thing is that sometimes the people who go to arts are also people who are from well-educated middle and upper-class families, and so it could be that these academic outcomes have more to do with that, uh, the family background, than with arts participation per se. So Catterall uh, broke this, his sample down by their socioeconomic status into, for instance, lower, middle, and upper uh, groups, and did the analyses again within each group and found that the same pattern held for each socioeconomic group. And so it appears that the effect really is due to uh, arts involvement and not other uh, predictors. And self-image, going back to Catterall and another study by Horn from 92, they found that the high uh, art students also had more enjoyment, excitement, fulfillment, and self-confidence. Wonderful things that show that we should not focus exclusively on academic outcomes. Um, also, in Horn, he had students who wrote and produced a play, and they found that those who did that, compared to others who did not, had greater leadership and positive self-perception. And I'm going to come back to that one in just a second, right here. The fourth outcome is professionalism. And now, this one we only had indirect evidence. Uh, there's not much on it. But what we found in that the Horn study is that the people who created the plays showed more leadership, which was you know, associated with professionalism. And also, based on personal experience, the lead author on this, uh, Nicole Ortega, was a high school teacher for over 10 years. And... Basically, the dancers are held to very high professional standards. So in the current study, we did retrospective self-reports with 121 former high school dance students, mostly Nicole students. We asked them both open-ended questions, such as, how did dance affect your self-image? Uh, what did you learn? How did it benefit you? And questions on a rating scale. For instance, dance helped me solve complex problems, um, and so on, which allowed us to do statistical analyses. First off, um, the students tended to study more than one genre of dance. Jazz was very common, followed by modern and ballet, and then others were less common. Now, in terms of the benefits of dance, these things went from what we had a 0 to 10 rating scale. 0, not at all. 10, absolutely. And we found that, not surprisingly, people rated it very high as enjoyable and valuable. These are above 8. Professionalism is above 8. 
helped academics in problem solving, still seven or higher, is black lines are confidence intervals, which indicate potential range of variation. Uh, and they so very high, uh, very positive outcomes, um, almost universally. The effects on self-image were overwhelmingly positive. This was something that was from open-ended, and we coded it as a positive effect or a negative effect or both. And it goes from zero, these are proportions, up to 100%. That's a one here. Over 80% reported positive outcomes as a result of dance. Uh, now, sadly, about a little less than 20% uh, reported negative, and then about 10% reported both positive and negative. And I'll come back to those in a second. The positive effects included things like I came out of my comfort zone, I had a greater sense of accomplishment, although the negative effects included uh, I had an eating disorder, which is unfortunately rather common among dance students. And an interesting one was a person wrote that they were ashamed because they loved ballet and they were in a modern dance class and they were basically heckled by the teacher, which is grossly inappropriate. Um, anyhow, something for dance uh, students and teachers to keep in mind that have a little more respect. Now this is a matrix of correlation coefficients. Correlations go from zero, which means no linear relationship between two variables, to one, which indicates a perfect linear relationship. And it can be positive or negative to indicate an uphill or downhill relationship. And what I have here are the statistically significant correlations. I've uh, also, I've omitted the decimal places, so normally it would be like 0.26. Uh, anyhow, problem solving as associated with the number of classes, whether they took ballet, jazz, or modern, also the number of genres, how long they've been doing it, and uh, whether they felt it had a positive effect. Um, dance classes, well, it's interesting to actually to look at it sideways. Ballet was associated with problem solving and professionalism, as well as feelings that it was valuable. Jazz associated with problem solving, academics, professionalism, and valuable. Modern was associated with problem solving, so these three major forms of, you know, dance. Um, professionalism, interestingly, was the only one that was associated with an increased GPA, and I'm not quite sure why that would be the case, except I know that Nicole, when she taught class, she had, for people to be in the modern dance club and perform, they had to maintain a particular GPA, uh, which was a big motivator for a lot of people. Um, interestingly, drill was associated, being in the drill team was associated with both positive and negative ambivalence, and I don't know why. And then we have other things here. Um, that I don't need to go into more detail. So what does this all mean? Uh, dance had some very positive effects. Um, we talked about confidence and uh, physical ability with some unfortunate negative effects such as uh, mostly eating disorders. Dance appeared to help academics, particularly with jazz, ballet, and modern. And as I said, Nicole had requirements for both attendance and grades, and they were very helpful in her experience. So our conclusions, dance is good for academic performance and self-image. Uh, on the other hand, this opens up some other possibilities, such as uh, instead of using a retrospective self-report, we could use current data or even prospective data where we identify students ahead of time and watch what outcomes occur. Also, we could get objective data by consulting records for their grades and dance classes and their overall GPA. You don't have to worry about a potentially shaky uh, retrospective. And obviously, the self-image, uh, the positive, and in particular, the negative self-image, deserves a lot more investigation, and I hope to look into that in the future. And thank you. That's it. Hope that was helpful.